Okay, folks, get this. A leak from the Chinese social network Weibo suggests that Apple and TSMC may once more be working together to develop an AI server CPU. Yes, you heard it right. According to rumors, a Weibo user has revealed the details of Apple's next move into the AI tool space. He claims that the CPU will be made utilizing TSMC's advanced 3 nanometer node. To add fuel to the fire, Apple recently made available several large language models that are intended to operate on device rather than via cloud servers. Among these, OpenELM stands out as a state of the art open language model. You know, while Apple is known for keeping its projects hidden until they're ready, it came as quite a surprise that OpenELM is ready to change everything as we know it. But will it really be like that? Let's see why OpenELM is so interesting. So this model is interesting not only for its openness, but also for its technological ability. It employs a layer-wise scaling technique, which improves accuracy to effectively distribute parameters across each layer of the transformer model. To put it simply, think of this technique as a way of making sure that each layer of the model has just the right amount of information it needs to function optimally without overloading any single part of the system. This helps the entire model work more efficiently and accurately, making it better at understanding and generating language. Interestingly, OpenELM is claimed to be 2.36% more reliable than OLMO, its previous model, and to do so with half as many pre-training tokens. Now let's talk a little about training. The model has been trained on billions of data points from a variety of public sources, including text from GitHub, Wikipedia, Stack Exchange, and others. Because of its extensive training, this model is able to comprehend and produce text at the human level, depending on the input it receives, with a maximum context window of 2,048 tokens. It also comes with a full suite of tools and frameworks for additional testing and training. And what's noteworthy is that Apple has chosen to create an open source framework that can be used for model evaluation and training. Normally, businesses only provide the model weights and the programs required to operate them. OpenELM goes beyond by providing training logs, several checkpoints, and extensive pre-training preparations. Now, what do you think of Apple's transparency strategy compared to others like Microsoft, OpenAI, and Amazon, who in recent months have been facing legal issues specifically related to their AI training methodologies? Let me know in the comments, folks. Anyway, OpenELM also employs a few smart techniques to maximize the capabilities of its machine. For instance, it is more accurate than other language models, even though it uses fewer pre-training tokens than other models like OLMO. It achieves this by utilizing ingenious techniques like grouped query attention and RMS norm to maintain equilibrium and enhance the model's performance in benchmark tests. Group query attention helps the AI zoom in on the most important parts of the data more effectively, which makes it better at understanding what it's processing. RMS norm is a technique that keeps the AI learning stable by making sure updates during training are even and balanced, preventing any part from becoming too dominant and keeping performance consistent. All right, folks, quick break to tell you, if you think I'm doing a good job with these videos, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like, both to support the channel and to ensure you don't miss the next AI news. Now, the model's effectiveness is demonstrated by the several typical zero-shot and few-shot tasks in which OpenELM consistently outperforms competing models. When it comes to how AI models like this are used in the real world, knowing how well they function there is crucial. This is why benchmarking is so important. These tasks assess the model's comprehension and response to unusual circumstances for which it hasn't been specifically trained. Apple has also made sure that OpenELM works smoothly on all sorts of setups, whether it's a computer running CUDA or Linux or Apple's own special chips. It just shows that this model can flex and adapt to different setups like a pro. Now, we might wonder how it compares to other such models. Tests have shown that this model is more accurate than other similar ones like OLMO. However, it operates a little bit more slowly since it verifies its computations using intricate techniques like RMS norm. The model was also tested on several different kinds of hardware configurations to make sure it works in many situations. 
I guess Apple's method of making sure its software runs well with its newest hardware is represented through OpenELLMs running on Apple's M2 Max processor. I guess the use of lazy evaluation and B-Float 16 precision by this chip ensures that the system handles data effectively. The concept of lazy evaluation is a programming concept where the evaluation of expressions is delayed until their results are needed. This uh, can improve the efficiency of the system by avoiding unnecessary calculations. But what else can we expect from this model? Well, there's plenty more. You know, OpenELM has a finely adjusted element management system. Each part of the model can be individually tuned, thus making maximum use of available processing power. This not only increases accuracy, but also allows the model to perform better across various AI tasks. This is because when OpenELM was in the testing phase, Apple realized that it produced accurate results, but the turnaround time was quite slow. The company is trying to work on this issue and make it faster without losing accuracy. After all, I think it's important to give correct answers after taking a moment to think rather than providing false claims in a matter of seconds. You know, folks, Apple tests OpenELM in a variety of ways. The tests are fed every type of information ranging from simple can-do tasks to difficult, critical thinking tasks. This test was carried out to see how OpenELM performed in different aspects of knowledge. Now, coming to the compatibility test, Apple had to make sure that its LLM model worked in sync with its own devices. So another test for OpenELM was carried out to examine how well it worked with Apple's MLX framework, which lets machine learning apps run directly on Apple devices. I guess that if it responds well, it will reduce the need for cloud-based services and keep user data more private. Moreover, since Apple released the code to OpenELM, developers can use it to modify the model and work with the MLX library. This helps developers include the LLM in their current systems without requiring an internet connection. I guess you could say Apple wants to provide developers the freedom to alter and include OpenELM into their applications. For this reason, the company makes models trained on datasets that are available to the public and, moreover, models with different parameter sizes are also available. I think Apple's commitment to on-device AI processing is indicative of a larger industry trend that places an emphasis on customer protection and privacy through localized computing. Moreover, I guess OpenELM might change how users interact with gadgets like MacBooks, iPads, and iPhones throughout the Apple ecosystem. But what do you think, folks? Anyway, running AI models directly on your phone and other IoT devices can be a game changer. You know, folks, by processing data locally, devices respond quicker and keep their personal information safe, which is super, super important these days. You see, since Apple's WWDC conference is not that far along, I really think the introduction of OpenELM is yet another element that suggests that iOS 18 may include AI functionality. It would be a large bang for the Apple community since they have been expecting it for quite some time. All right, folks, let me know in the comments what you think about OpenELM and also comment with AI if you made it this far. Plus, if you liked the video and found the information useful, subscribe to the channel and give it a like. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.